a couple of my my private clients uh, were doctors, and I would start talking to them about um, nutrition and lifestyle, and I'd be like, "Oh, you probably already know this." You yeah, right. went to medical school, school, and almost one hundred percent of the time, they would say, "Yeah, there was there was a paragraph on that in a uh -huh. chapter of a book of a, like a thousand page book that I read." Um, and the end. <laughs> so yeah. I'm like, right. okay, so you don't as understand as much about health as I thought. You understand a lot about sickness, but you don't yeah. understand as much about health. Yeah. And so then it 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 just kind of fueled me to go on this mission to learn as much as I could to supplement the the education that just doesn't seem to broadly exist because people are going to these doctors for health care, yeah. but they're getting sick care. Welcome to the Coach MD podcast. I'm Dr. Charles Glassman, bringing you three decades of experience as a physician and a coach. Join us as we navigate the maze of medical advice with real-life stories, empowering you to take charge of your health. In our That Happens segment, guests share transformative experiences, reminding us that we're all human and not just patients. So get ready for a journey into healthcare reimagined, where empowerment and discovery pave the way. Hey, it's Dr. Charles, AKA Coach MD. In my over 30 years of medical practice, I made it my goal to help you create a strong mind, a healthy body, and an unshakable spirit. And what I talk about a lot about is that as a doctor, I never really like taking care of patients. I hate that term, taking care of patients, because really, I think the, the true essence of a physician is to teach people how to give them the tools so they can take care of themselves. So who I like to have on, on my podcast and share with you are people who kind of despite doctor's recommendations sometimes, you know, taking their health into their own hands because a lot of people know a lot more about their own health just by doing their own research and knowing their body than getting the advice from a doctor who most of the time is just going to reach into their pocket and prescribe them a pill and try to diagnose them with with a condition. So I'm really excited to uh, share uh, my guests, to have my guests on today, who has a, a, a great business, Primal Wellness Coaching, and has started, has launched a podcast as well, which we're going to talk a lot about. And, you know, these are, are uh, Drew, who's going to introduce himself in a second, um, has, again, in a, in a way taken upon himself to learn about wellness and health and give people tools to take care of themselves again almost this and you'll talk more about this Drew but uh, you know I don't want to put words in your mouth but some I like to say despite doctor's recommendations because look I was a doctor I know my colleagues I know the first reflex that that we were taught in medicine uh is to uh, have people diagnose people with problems and then treat problems instead of teaching people how to embody true wellness, care for themselves and stay healthy. So thanks a lot, Drew, for, for coming on today. And we, we share some, some things in common too, which we'll talk a lot about. Uh, I'm really excited because I, I, I know you're, you're into, you know, athletics and sports and, and mindset and, and wellness and, and martial arts. So uh, why don't you introduce yourself to everybody? Yeah, Dr. Charles, thank you. Thank you for having me on the show. This is a treat and I love what you do. So I'm really excited for this conversation. So my name is Drew Grissel. I am the owner of Primal Wellness Coaching and the host of the Superhuman Blueprint podcast. And so if I go way back, I was not an athlete. I was the kid with asthma. Mm. I remember in high school, I they put me in weightlifting class because I couldn't run. I couldn't do any regular sports because it would trigger an asthma attack. And weightlifting was my nap period. So I found the machine in the back that no one ever wanted to use, and I would take a nap on that machine every wow. day. I passed with the D. Yeah. <laughs> Somehow. <laughs> right. Of course, I got extra credit for uh, for you know my my recovery in sleep. Yeah, um, But it really wasn't until my 20s that I discovered, my mid-20s really, that I discovered martial arts as a way to improve my my health. Mm. And the asthma just kind of went away as a problem. It's It still exists, but it's not really a problem anymore. Yeah. Um, and so, yeah, I started out doing uh, Muay Thai kickboxing, traditional Western boxing. I did some Brazilian jiu-jitsu and eventually found my way into Krav Maga. 
um, which for those that don't know is a self-defense form that comes from Israel. It's what the Israeli defense forces use, and it is not a competition martial art. It is it mm. is essentially practical self-defense for um, real assaults. So they, we you know we talk about. Uh, multiple assailants or being attacked with weapons and you know we we go for s soft tissue strikes eyes throat groin mm -hmm. and the the objective is to get away not to engage in a fight and to yeah. win by by points or knockout if you can knock him out great because then it's easier to get away but that's not the main right. objective yeah um anyhow that the martial arts journey kind of got me then into a healthier lifestyle because being able, to, I wanted to take a bunch of classes every week. And then that kind of led me to realize, oh, well, my energy is better and everything's better if I eat better and if I sleep better. <laughs> and right? it, it really wasn't until yeah. close to the pandemic when I, I really started to delve into the world of, of fitness in particular. Um, and fitness, just by nature of, uh, I was teaching already. I was teaching Krav Maga and many of my students wanted just tips on you know mm. their fitness because they would come in for class or for for our very exhaustive test days and they would want some guidance on how to to show up better for that and I didn't know I mean I could guess you know I we I led people in warm ups and all that I knew some fundamentals I took CrossFit classes and so I I'd, I'd done plenty of workouts myself but didn't have training so I I got some formal training and credentials in fitness and nutrition. But then when I started to coach people in fitness and nutrition, I realized that there is so much more yeah. to to well-being that if people don't have all of these other things dialed in, then they're not going to see a lot of gains from dialing in their fitness and nutrition. And so then I just went down the rabbit hole of, of wellness and all of that. And so my focus then really became on on building good life habits, on having good sleep, on you know, just having a strong and healthy human body, you know, yeah. well beyond what you get from working out or having or eating clean. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, man, that's so important because, you know, um, over the years, you know, people would come into me and, and ask me advice and, uh, and, and really, uh, you know, the, the, the model of modern medicine is a sickness model. Yeah, it's not a wellness model. So yeah. people come to the doctor when they're sick. I mean, I uh, changed my practice um, in uh, the early 2000s to a concierge practice. So I was one of the first doctors in the country to do that. And it allowed me to, to really spend time with my patients. But still, it was kind of the same old, same old, where I just had less patience. I'd have more time talking to them about their problems. But um it just wasn't, it kind of was the same thing until one, uh, uh, one guy came into my office and he said how great he felt talking to me, but then he'd go back into his life and things would fall apart. And he asked me, was there a way for me to keep him on the, on, on the straight track? Mm -hmm. And so we came up with this idea of a, of a weekly email, which kind of grew into eventually a book that I read, uh, wrote called brain drain. But, okay. Yeah, you know what you're talking about, basically, because and this guy, honestly, unfortunately, you know, d never really did so great. He, ne I, I really wasn't able to to yeah. keep him on on he, the straight. You can only do so much, right? Uh, unfortunately, all, yeah. all of our uh, our patients, customers, whatever, have free will, so they yeah. <laughs> they won't just do what they what we tell them. Exactly, but you know, this is the like a, a business like yours is the perfect segue or primary uh, 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 approach only because I say primary because they're not, most people are not going to get it from their doctors. Most people will come in and they're, they're suffering from lifestyle uh, problems. Uh, their, mm -hmm. their illnesses are lifestyle problems yep. or mental health problems. So they're either lifestyle problems or mental health problems. So uh, the doctors is, basically ill-equipped to deal with either of those and which is sad but it's true um uh, and what the doctor's going to recommend is okay you, you, you know you really you need to eat less you know uh, and and exercise more and and yeah get more sleep too yeah and um you know 
you really should think positive. Maybe you should think about meditation or something. Okay. So that's the extent of it. Yeah. Um, and a lot of doctors don't even get that fun. Being right, honest. right. Right. Well, that's true too. And, you know, so I, I really, I, I love, you know, this, this kind of paradigm where in a really a paradigm shift and we have so much information that's available now, but you kind of need somebody to, to encapsulate it, to kind of give you a, a program. Cause not every, every like, things, everybody's different and you can't fit somebody into a neat program. So, so, okay, people, okay. Lose weight. Okay. So they go on a keto diet or, you know, paleo diet or a low carb diet, whatever, but that may, you know, everybody's different and you have to really know your body. It does help when you have a coach outside of a medical doctor who's really educated or educated themselves with the whole the, the the whole body mind and spirit and so if you could so the obviously the pandemic was a disaster for for wellness and mm -hmm. some people took it uh to another level did well with it others didn't and um i was lucky I, i'm involved now in in crossfit we'll talk about my martial arts okay. training yeah, later yeah. But I do CrossFit. That's my primary exercise, functional fitness. And our gym, you know, we had virtual classes. They they actually let us lent out all their equipment to their yeah. members. Yeah, so yeah. The, our local studio here did as well. Yeah, yep. it's great. Yeah. So yeah. tell us how in in that that period of time, how kind of you know that really. It, it was a wake up call and it sounds like it was a wake up call for you to really take things really seriously. Yeah. Well, the, the trigger for me, and by the way, I'm, I'm going to, I'm probably going to just going to keep complimenting you, but I, I love all the things you're saying. In fact, I recently had a brilliant doctor of chiropractic on my podcast, uh, Dr. Brian Wyckoff. And I love chiropractic. I've been to a lot of chiropractors. This guy, I have also, yeah. yeah but this guy blows <laughs> them all out of the water. All the ones in, in, in my experience. Yeah. Um, anyway, he, we were talking about all kinds of things and you know, he just, he, he made the comment, the healthcare industry has become a sick care industry. Yeah. Um, and you know, he's a big fan of the medical practice, right. Of emergency response and, and all of that. But oh, you know, yeah. it's kind of like, yeah. what are you, what are you using healthcare for anyway? Um, yeah. Segue. <laughs> no, no, that's, I, I agree. I mean, look, if you have a, a, a if you're having a heart attack, okay. I mean, it's cute. You need emergency care. Yeah. Okay? yeah. You have trauma. You need emergency care. We, we have brilliant emergency care. But yeah. But anyway, to, 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 to kind of live your life and live a whole life, you need, you know, less of a doctor, really. Mm -hmm. you yeah. Know? So, um, but yeah, the, so the pandemic was a trigger for me in an interesting way. And it was the fact that I was doing well because I, I kept my routine in. I kept my exercise in. I kept eating healthy. I didn't stop going outside. You know, I, I kept my relationships with my friends active, but I saw people all around me mm. going down and mm. down and down. Yeah. And it was very disheartening. Yeah. And it was during the pandemic that I first pursued formal training and, and certification in, in fitness and nutrition to start with. Mm. And I was able to little bit by little bit start chipping away at kind of bringing people back up and then even elevating them from where they were before the pandemic. And that for me was extremely profound and extremely fulfilling. Yeah. Um, and I, I learned that there's a view of the medical system and, and pharmaceutical industry is is I I kind of equate it to politics where you have people that are that are really hard in one direction, people that are really hard in the other direction, and then there's you know some people that are kind of in the middle, but they're the quiet ones. They don't really talk about it, right? Because you know they're they're one way or the other. It doesn't really matter to them. Um, but I found that during the pandemic, it became apparent that there were a lot of people that were putting blind faith in some of the very destructive guidance that we were being given yeah and and it was taking them down mm -hmm. um and the, but then there were those folks that would 
they would reach out that hand and they would, you know, they're, they're, they're looking for help. And so I, I opened myself up to help people. You know, it, I was teaching at the, uh, the Krav Maga studio at the time and, um, we, it was very awkward, but we started recording videos and posting videos online, which, you know, mostly they were fitness, but we, just to keep people, get our members active. Mm -hmm. Um, we froze all the accounts. We didn't feel it was right to charge people when they couldn't come in and take class, but we wanted to keep them engaged and keep them moving. Um, one, just for their own health and two, hoping that they'd come back once we were able to reopen. Um, so we started putting out fitness videos and then we started putting out self-defense videos. And then we started teaching classes on zoom, which is mm. very awkward to teach, uh, self-defense. Yeah, I can imagine. Yeah. I mean, they, they mostly became kind of fitness and like boxing. Yeah. Uh, you can, you can shadow box in your living room and that's fine. Uh, right. But, uh, but then people, you know, they started to come out of it and they started to reach out. And then I was able to, to start working one-on-one -on -one with people reaching out to me that, that really wanted to, to get active again. Mm. Um, and that's, and then I learned that a couple of my, my private clients, uh, were doctors and their training. I would, I would start talking to them about, um, nutrition and lifestyle. And I'd be like, Oh, you probably already know this. Yeah. Right. this Medical school, school. And they'll, and, and almost 100% <laughs> of the time they would say, yeah, there was, there was a paragraph on that in a uh -huh. chapter of a book of a, like a thousand page book that I read. Um, and the end, <laughs> so yeah. I'm like, right. okay, so, so you don't as, understand as much about health as I thought you understand a lot about sickness, but you don't yeah. understand as much about health. Yeah. And so then it, it, it just kind of fueled me to go on this mission to learn as much as I could to supplement the, the education that just doesn't seem to broadly exist because people are going to these doctors for health care, yeah. but they're getting sick care. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, that's, I mean, that's the key point because they think they're going, uh, you know, for something different. And um, it's it, like, for instance, if you go for a wellness check, uh, most doctors, first of all, look, before I changed my concierge to concierge practice, I was seeing anywhere from 30 to 50 patients a day. Okay, so yeah. that's, you know, bada bing, bada boom. Okay. You're in and out. Okay. So if someone comes in for a physical, if you're lucky, you're going to get a 15 minute physical, maybe 20 minute physical. But what does that mean? If you're coming for a wellness physical, you basically want the doctor to tell you that you're not sick and you can go on your right. way, keep doing what you're doing until you get sick. And then, right. then we have something for you. Yeah. So, yeah. I mean, that's, that, that's the, um, kind of the, the model, um, you know, it's interesting what you're talking about, uh, you know, with your asthma and then how you uh, got into the martial arts and, and that kind of changed you. And I remember um, I started um, the uh, martial arts when I was a first year medical student. Um, it was the I second. I can't believe you had time for that. Well, uh, this is, yeah. And it's great that you said that because most people would not have time for it. Right. And it became such a, a major part of my life mm -hmm. that it it really helped me uh, through medical school. I met my wife in that class also, which was great. Okay. Yeah. Oh, cool. Uh, yeah. You know, I mean, it was uh, <laughs> brilliant. It's a great ex story. Exactly. Right. So, um, and yeah, so what happened, I, I mean, she came in and <laughs> she, she, her mother worked, this, this is how you know, the divine, you know, works, you know, the, the universe, if you will, or God works. And it, this was not a coincidence. Um, her mother worked in the medical school and uh, oh. this was, th this was the second year um, it, it, that I was in it. It was my second year of medical school. And we used to, you know, work hard, play hard. So we wanted to get so many people into our class because it was, the, the sensei was a, uh, a, a first year resident. He had, um, when he was in college, he, no kidding. He, yeah. And, and so he, when he was in college and then he brought it to medical school and started the, the, our club at, at, at medical school, it was USA go Jew. So, uh, it was, uh, brought over by Peter Urban from, you know, uh, who was a uh, American, but he trained in Okinawa, mm -hmm. brought it over and started his own training USA go Jew. And, um, we used to, you know, we had in that class, we didn't just have medical students, we had nurses, we had maintenance people, we had professors, we had 
all different uh, life sorts of, of people. And we wanted that. And we wanted that because that's who we were, the type of people who were in that class. So we put up posters and she, um, her mother took down one of those posters, brought it home. And her daughter had just graduated college mm -hmm. and had uh, done a uh, a similar type of actually a karate in in, in college and okay. so she came to our class and i remember the first day i didn't know this woman right and i saw her talking with our sensei and he, he he's like a happily married guy and all this but he was kind of a flirt you know okay. in, yeah. at the beginning you know it's we're young and we're in our 20s and you know obviously sure. so he's flirting around with her and i'm looking who's this you know this, woman you know, chick you know and so I, then i see her she starts pumping out push-ups like regular push-ups so yeah, like yeah. not on her knee and i said whoa who is this yeah and then uh we got to know each other and obviously you know, sparring in class and stuff like that uh, kumite and, and stuff and it was great and i i was involved in, in karate uh through my uh, through medical school through residency and even wow. a little bit of time when i was in practice um but I moved away and, 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 uh, but I, uh, I got a knee on second degree black belt in USA go Jew. And, wow, and cool. uh, yeah, that was, that was fun. It was great. Uh, but when, when getting back though, when you're talking about the asthma kind of circling back, it's something I always wanted to do. And I never really felt, even though I was in, yeah, I was thin, I was reasonably good shape, but I never felt that healthy mm -hmm. and, and I was very insecure uh emotionally and socially and just yeah really just and i just saw people who did karate i remember when i was even younger i saw like a kid doing karate like when he was 10 years old or 12 and i yeah. kind of having envy over you know having that kind of envy yeah and i always wanted to do it and and so i could see how you doing that got you well because it's mm -hmm. not only obviously the physical but the mental and asthma you know, it's very emotional. It can be very emotional. Yeah. It's it's physical, but it can be emotional. So, yeah, tell us a little bit about how you feel that might have helped you with your your asthma, because you know th this could help people just in general if they have chronic illnesses uh, and they're and they're losing hope that they can't get better. Um, if you can think back about that it, experience, well, for one thing, it flipped my mindset on cardiovascular fitness because mm. my asthma had always been triggered by movement. I didn't run as a child, um, or if I did, yeah. <laughs> I'd suffer for it. Yeah. Um, but I, when I started taking Muay Thai, it's it's a very cardiovascular intense workout, and it it became apparent to me that my inability to to engage in cardiovascular activity prior to that really was was a lot more mental than physical mm. because all of a sudden I could do it right? yeah. and it was it wasn't just because I made my lungs stronger by doing it I, I'm sure that helped mm -hmm. but it was a huge mental thing it was it was just it was something different it was something that I enjoyed and it was something that it was distracting enough because I wanted to be really good at it. And I was looking at the the students around me in the class and, you know, looking at the the ones that are, you know, more advanced than I am and I'm wanting to do it the way they do it. And it just, it was, it was motivating. Right. And my attention just wasn't on my body. It wasn't on my asthma. It was on my form. It was on mm -hmm. my level of commitment. My, my attention just, once my attention went off of my body, my body kind of stopped being a problem. Wow. Yes. Wow. That's big. That is powerful. Yeah, that is really good. And I, I did a podcast uh, a little while ago with a woman who, a um, friend, of, friend of mine who had back pain, chronic back pain. Mm -hmm. And and it, it, people, I, 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 we all know people who they say, oh, I, I can't do anything. I, 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 my back, I have, I have a bad back. I have, they take ownership. I have a bad back. Yeah. Okay. So they take ownership of that. And she basically cured it with, with a doc's, uh, uh, not from her doctor, but from a doctor's book, Dr. Sarno's book about that and about mindset. So, Oh, mindset. Yeah. She, she just, cured it with mindset with mindset. Wow. Basically. Yeah. 
total mindset. Okay, it was change a flip because you know, and, and uh, we're not going to talk about it on this podcast. But when I come on yours, we'll talk about my book Brain Drain. And uh -huh. when I wrote that, you know, I thought, okay, I wrote it basically for myself, honestly. You know, okay, kind of work through my own head. And hey, that's just, that's usually where it starts, right? Right. Yeah. Exactly. And it just turned out that it it was appealing to other people, and because we all have similar stuff. Um, and I didn't, I had never heard of Dr. Sarno, but when I heard about this guy who uh, cured Howard Stern's back pain, you know, and, and John Stossel and, and some other celebrities, uh, I started reading his stuff and I said, whoa, somebody actually put this into work and action. And he was a very well-respected, well, until he started getting canceled, of course, but he was a very yes, well-respected, yeah, very well-respected when he, when he was talking the truth about truly about, uh, and he was a physical medicine rehab at Rusk Institute, a very, very well-known institute in um, in New York. Um, and she basically was referred that book. And I, I'm pretty sure I had recommended it to her one time too, but it just wasn't ready. Somebody yeah. else recommended it to her. And they have she- have to be ready. If it's a mindset thing, they have to be, they have to be ready to change their mindset. Absolutely. And that's all it was. Yeah. That's, that's, that's what it was. And it just flipped and she got off the couch and was is active again, just like yeah. that. So it, it doesn't, it doesn't surprise me that your asthma, although it doesn't, it may not, it's there and it could rear its ugly head sometimes, but I'm sure it's much less. And, and what you're saying and what I'd like to you know, have people understand is that when you take ownership of something and say, I have it, or, or say, I am an asthmatic and just define yourself by your illness, it's so, you, you well, you are it, you become it. And that mm -hmm. that's who you are. Yep. But when you don't focus on it, like you're saying, your, your body and uh, yeah, that that's really great. Um, yeah. Actually my, uh, my flagship program that I run my clients through my, my private training clients, which I call the superhuman blueprint. So my podcast is actually, uh, named in honor of my program. Um, it's, it's really about creating mindset change. And again, you can't, you can't change someone's mindset unless they're ready, but mm -hmm. you know, that's, that's part of my vetting process is people need to be ready in order for me to work with them. Um, and it's largely about uh, all of these micro behaviors where if you stack them on top of each other, they are profound. Yeah. Individually, they don't seem like much of anything, but when you stack them and you stack them over time and you kind of build upon them and build upon them over time, they become so profound. Mm. Mm. I'd like to hear more about this. Actually, if you could, you know, kind of share, like, let's say, okay, I, I say, oh, all right, you know, I, I need some help. So I, I, come to to drew i come mm -hmm. to the primal wellness coaching what, what like what's that process look like so it's conversational at first right it's it's an interview it's a two-way interview right people have to work with, want to work with me and i have to want to yeah. work with them um and like i said i have to be able to get a sense that they're they're ready that they have some flexibility in their mindset um, because most people when they're looking for for private training, you know, a lot of people, it just starts with, I want to lose weight. Mm -hmm. um, sometimes it's, I want more energy, which is, you know, I love those ones, but a lot of yeah. the times it's just, I want to look better. Yeah. Um, so it starts out kind of superficial. Um, so because of that, I really have to refine my vetting process because my, I can help people look better, but that's, that's right. not really my goal. Right. Mm -hmm. So if, if, if their goal and my goal, if we're not able to align our goals, then we're not aligned. So yeah. I want to make sure that we can be aligned. Um, so it starts with feeling better. And then once you feel better, then you can, you can do anything. You can look better. Um, if, if that's what you need. Mm. So through an interview process, you know, we, it's just, okay, this is, these are some of the things that I'm going to ask you to do. And this is how long we're going to spend on it. And we're going to go through all these things before we really even get to, you know, your body composition, you know, how does that land with you? Okay. Well, these are my priorities. This is my lifestyle. Um, these are the things that I have to do in my life. Um, either because I actually have to, or because I'm just like, you know, I'm, these are my habits and I don't think I can change them. And these are the things I have flexibility on. And yeah, you know, it's, it's a lot of just digging and digging and chipping away and ch chipping away and figuring out if, if we can get there. 
Um, and so once we get started working together, you know, I do, I do the regular fitness stuff, right? We, I do the, you know, the, the cardio assessments and the flexibility assessments and the strength assessments. Um, but honestly, that's, that, that stuff is kind of minimal. So yeah. I start building in habits. So, okay, you're going to start to get some sunlight because most mm -hmm. of us live indoors, work indoors. We try to park close to the door of where we're going. So we right. spend minimal time under the sun and, and sun, the sun is the, the oldest and uh, greatest medicine that we have and, mm. and it's free and people are missing the sun. And, you know, I, I, I fully respect that we have to harness sunlight responsibly because it's also very, right. can be very damaging if not done right. so, but, right. but sunlight is free medicine. Um, so, you know, we, we do things like starting to spend time outside, starting to look at how much are you moving every day? Um, Non-exercise activity thermogenesis is is a big one, right? Mm. So you, you keep your body moving, you keep the thermogenic effect going. And not only is it just, is it making you healthier and helping to maintain a more steady level of energy throughout the day, but hey, guess what? You're also burning calories, so cool. Yeah. Yeah. Um, hydration. Most people are dehydrated. They don't know how much water to drink and they don't know what they don't understand water mm. quality. So, you know, we, we work on hydration and we work on diet a bit, you know, diet, diet is a whole thing. And I'm not mm. a dietitian. I'm not a registered dietitian. Um, yeah. I do understand diet. Um, but we work on habits around diet. Mostly we, we do focus a little bit on macronutrients and if they want to get into it more, we can get into it more. I can refer them to a dietitian that I work with. Um, and then we we do other things that can uh, introduce hormetic stressors and and you know stimulate autophagy and cellular recycling. So things like getting cold and getting hot, um, not not eating constantly all day long, mm -hmm. and and we do work in exercise. So for some people that don't exercise at all, exercise is very intimidating. So we work in exercise snacks, right? So you know, a little bit here and a little bit there. So it's, it's not really a workout, but you're doing some workout movements and then we can build up to full workouts. People that are, that already have their workouts dialed or, or already have like a routine around fitness. That's, those are the easy ones, right? Then I can, just, yeah. I can refine what they're already doing. Yeah. Um, otherwise we, we start small and we build on it. It's, it's all about starting small. And, and so a lot of these, these things, they contribute to, you know, the, the hydration and managing when you're eating and to a degree what you're eating. Um, it's about creating a more constant state of energy. So from the time you wake up to the time you go to sleep, a more continuous flow of energy, right? So you're not, mm -hmm. you're not rising and crashing and rising and crashing. You know, if people want caffeine, they can have caffeine. I don't tell them not to have caffeine, but caffeine will only get you so far. Right. So I, I want people to have a consistent energy throughout the day. I want them to sleep well at night. I want them to recover overnight so that when they wake up in the morning, they can start fresh and do all these things again. And my goal is to create habits, right? I am I am guiding them through all of these little things, these micro changes, right? Like the cold exposure. Okay, take a 20 second cold shower. Yeah. Everybody hates cold showers. It's the worst thing ever. I hate it. But you can, yeah, you <laughs> right. hate it, right? Everybody, right. Nobody, nobody likes it, but you right. can do it for 20 seconds. Right. And then you, we build on it, right? You know, yeah. it becomes, it becomes more tolerable. It's, it's never nice, but it right. becomes tolerable. Right. Um, so yeah, all the micro changes, right. When even hydration, right. I'm not just going to tell people you got to drink this much water every day. Okay. Let's start out. You're, you're here. So let's get you to here and then we'll go to here and then we'll go to here. And eventually we'll be up here where you should be because it's just, I don't overwhelm is a real thing and it, yes. it you lose people with overwhelm. Yes. Absolutely. Yeah. So I'm going to share the story and you'll, you'll appreciate this because, uh, and I've told it before and, but it was, uh, it was from Zen in the martial arts by, uh, oh God, I'm drawing a blank on his name right now, but anyway, it was Zen in the martial arts and it goes like this. So there was a, a 10 year old boy and he wants to be a, a black belt. He goes to a sensei and he says, sensei, uh, I want to be a black belt. How long is it going to take? And the boy and the sensei says, 10 years. He goes, 10 years? I'm 10 years old. That's twice my life. What if I work on it every day? And the sensei says, 20 years. He goes, What 20 years? That's crazy. I mean, what if 
what if I move into the dojo and all I do is eat and sleep karate? How long then, Sensei? Sensei says, 30 years. He goes, I don't understand. So the Sensei says, son, if you have one eye on your goal, you have only one eye on the path in which to find the way. And so what I, with that overwhelm, so let's say someone needs to lose a hundred pounds, you know, they look at that goal and they're staring at that goal. They have to lose a hundred pounds. They only have one eye on what they need to do, those micro habits. Yep. And, and I love what you're doing with the mindset and talking about that because I, I learned that first in karate, that was definitely an influence, but throughout my career as a doctor that, you know, we talk about fixing the body all the time or getting our body into shape um, and, and looking, and, and that's a big thing now because, you know, we all know these big podcasts are always giving people things to do. Okay, so do cold therapy, uh, you know, do this or whatever. I mean, they're, they're giving you these blueprints or, or not blueprints, these um, you know, set ideas of what you need to do without talking about mindset. And what yep. your blueprint sounds like is that you have mindset is so important because it, it shapes everything we do. And, mm -hmm. and I, I mean, that's the frustration I had when I was a doctor is that you know, people would come into me complaining of things. And I, I really, a lot of times what's really going on. I mean, yeah, I, this woman came to me once who her stomach was a mess and we were, and she said, what can you give me? Can you give me something to relax my stomach? It's in spasm all the time, you know, um, whatever. And we talked a little bit and it turned out that her mother, who she had a terrible relationship with had just moved into live with her oh, okay. after they had, had a, you know, a, a relationship that was very estranged for yeah. many, many years, but she was getting older, didn't have a place to stay. She came in and she's bossing her around just like she used to do when she was 10 years old. And this woman's 60 years old, Yeah, you know? So, I, I mean, it's the, 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 the micro habits the, that you're talking about and, and changing habits so many people are into um such you know a rut a habitual rut of of what they do in life and and they have to they they need something to shake it out shake them mm -hmm. out i think yep. uh there's i'm sure you see that all the time this uh they need to be shaken up a bit you know yeah and uh some something one thing that i am is candid i am candid with yeah. uh with anyone that wants to talk to me about this stuff and I will keep it real because I, I need them to understand like, what does the journey look like? Right. And, and what do you have to put into it? Yeah. I'm, I'm a coach, right? I, I guide you along the journey, but you have to put one foot in front of the other. If you don't, there's only so much I can do. Yeah. I mean, what coach, I mean, really, if you're going to be a coach, so my coach MD, how that came about was my, my patients, as I started writing and emailing and everything, I became as much or more of a coach than the medical doctor part, you know? Mm -hmm. So I, I was, I remember in the shower one day thinking, not a cold shower. It was a warm shower. <laughs> <laughs> Too bad. I know. Come I do on. that. No, Come I, on, Dr. I know. I, I, I got to do it. I do it sometimes. I do. I, I, I know it. And, and you had mentioned the hormetic effect, you know, mm -hmm. about hormesis. Yep. And for the, 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 you know, my audience who may not know that I have mentioned in the past, it's basically what doesn't kill you makes you stronger. And yep. we all know that effect. I mean, when we exercise, we're breaking down muscle. So we're actually hurting our muscles in a sense, hurting in air quotes, um, but it's rebuilding or cardiovascularly. We're kind of stressing ourselves. We're are stressing our body, but it's making us stronger. So when we really need it, it's going to be there for us. And, and cold therapy, there's, you know, a lot written about it. Um, it's really, it's different, you know, it's different. It's a shock to our body and, and our body, if you want to get into the, the science about it, it, we have cold shock proteins. Mm -hmm. We also have heat shock proteins, but yep. it's something that, that, that are supposed to be good for you. And so these are things that when you, shock your body or when you as you know drew was talking about when you change things when you shake things up a bit 
you know, sometimes you just got to shake things up, you know? I mean, the cells of our body get into habits and you got to shake them up, you know? Oh yeah. I mean, you can, uh, I'm no, I'm not educated in this at all, but I understand like neuropathways to a degree that you have to do new things, right? Otherwise they, you just, you get this, this kind of neuro stagnation uh -huh. and you're, you're, you have some degeneration from a yeah. neurological perspective. So you have to continue, same thing. You have to continue to challenge yourself, you know, do new things, learn new things, do things that make you uncomfortable. Um, there was actually a, I haven't seen the study myself, but I was listening to a Andrew Huberman podcast um, where he was talking about how there's kind of some new, um, new science on this, this neuro study where they actually found that, doing things you don't want to do actually grows part of your brain. Mm -hmm. um, just, just by the act of, of overcoming that, that, uh, that fear or that discomfort actually creates growth in the brain is pretty amazing. Yeah. I, I, I got to find that cause I'd love to look at that. Yeah. I don't, I don't doubt it. And I, I, I really respect Andrew Huberman. I, I think uh, of all the, the, people on the internet um and podcasts I, I really respect him and i heard him talking about god actually which okay which blew me away okay and how he you know through all his science and everything how it's it's led him to a, a belief in god huh. and and to me that was such a humble admission because in the science community it's anathema you know it's it's really uh, in, in much of the science community but another i respect him because he's giving people kind of what they need to hear about the physical all right, right. because yeah. we we all know uh and 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 I, he's much more of a scientist than i am uh I kind of know intuitively that these things make sense. So what you're saying about growing more brain tissue, some people need to hear that right. to actually implement something. Okay. Yeah. So he's giving people actual physical uh, reason to do what they need to do. Whereas some people, and I, I'd like to think myself intuitively, I, I, I don't need to hear that because what you're saying makes total sense to me. And that's why as I'm going to be, uh, I'm not going to give my age, but I'm in my sixties. Okay. Mm -hmm. I don't want to give my exact age for privacy <laughs> stuff, but you know, I'm in my sixties yeah. and um, I, you know, not only do I do CrossFit. Okay. But I, I'm, I'm not practicing uh, as a clinical doctor anymore, but I'm doing a lot outside as a doctor, which is mm -hmm. expanding my brain. I'm learning to speak Spanish. Cool. Um, you know, I'm doing things, not just crossword puzzles, although mm -hmm. I do like to do crossword puzzles, but if you're someone who does crossword puzzles all your life, then change it. Yep. Okay. Do something do, different. Do some Sudoku. <laughs> do Sudoku. Right. Or, 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 um, what's the, your, your school again, the self-defense, the, the, that's oh, Krav Maga. Krav Maga. Yeah. Go to Krav Maga. I don't care yeah. how old you Come are because Krav, yeah. you, you're learning. Like I, I look at CrossFit like that because it's, as you know, it's multiple exercises all the time, changing it up all the time. It's technique to those exercises. So I have to think about those techniques. So I'm learning new things. Um, yeah. I mean, so it's, 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 it, and, and that's what getting back to the you're growing your brain, I'm sure in, in, in what you do uh, in your practice, um, uh, in your coaching, that's a lot of what is happening and that's probably the success even beyond what you know to when when you have your more successful clients yep i would imagine that's what they're uh that's what's happening to them probably well they change their lifestyle without even realizing they're changing their lifestyle they they what they see is okay coach drew is telling me to do these these two or three things i'm going to do these two or three things and um and we're just going to keep talking about these two or three things and then i i you know, we build on the intensity of those two or three things. And then I start to I start to just kind of just slip in a few more things that they stack on top of those two or three things. And, you know, within a couple of months, they've drastically changed a lot of parts of their life. You know, they're not seeking comfort in everything mm. they do anymore. And that's, uh, that's something else, right? Just 
just being okay with being uncomfortable. Park far away from the door of wherever you're going. You know, get some sunlight, get some steps in. It's okay. You know, spend that extra 40 seconds walking that you wouldn't have spent otherwise. Yeah. And I was, yeah, it's great. Go ahead. I'm sorry. Yeah. Uh, yeah I'm, I'm currently putting together a, uh, an online kind of self, self directed version of what I'm doing. Um, just because I, I only have capacity to work with so many clients on this, but I, I want everyone to be able to do it. So I'm kind of working through the mm. nuances of being able to, to build into kind of text or video form, like how to have the conversations that I have in person. Right. So how to, how to, to keep people moving forward. So I'm currently building that and hoping to, to release it this summer, but yeah, I'm, I, I want, I want everyone to, to live the life that they're meant to live. And that's why I call the protocol, the superhuman blueprint, not because anyone's going to get superpowers, but because in our original primal state, we were meant to be so much stronger and healthier than mm -hmm. we've become in, in the society that we live in. Yeah. Oh, that, that's, that's beautiful. I love that. And kind of why I'm doing what I'm doing too, to leverage, you know, what we have information and knowledge and uh, applying what we do in our own lives in sharing that with other people and, and those successes. And yeah, you can only do so much as a, as seeing one-on-one. -on -one. I mean, mm -hmm. your, your time is limited and, and right. you know, you have much more information to give. And I love the name of your podcast and your, you know, the, oh, it's, thank it's, you. Yeah. It's, it's beautiful. And it is a blueprint. It is a, 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 a map showing people. Um, and, you know, before we, we, we end our conversation, Drew, um, I'm going to put the links, you know, how people can get in touch with you in, in the, uh, you know, in the description uh, and on, uh, we're on YouTube, Spotify yeah. and Apple. Um, and I'll put all that information. Uh, is there anything uh, in particular that you want to highlight, uh, you know, before we break uh, our conversation today? I just, so I like to caution people on both sides of the whole medical doctor thing. Um, you know, on, on the one hand for all of the naysayers, right. The people that are like medical is sponsored by big pharma and I don't trust it. There is still a profound value in what you can get from even your regular run of the mill general practitioner. You just have to know how to ask the right questions and, and dig for engagement. You know, some, some doctors they're like you said, you're, you're in and out in a couple of minutes. Um, you just have to, you have to demand the engagement that you need to get what you need out of your general practitioner, um, or your specialist or whatever you're going to the doctor for. On the other hand, for the folks that are, you know, they're, they're all in, they're probably not listening to this podcast anyway, but right. <laughs> for, for those folks, um, you know, just, yeah. just come at it with an open mind, right? You know, one, one person's education isn't all encompassing. So yeah, you know, talk to a doctor and talk to a wellness coach and, and kind of see, see what aligns and what makes sense. Yeah, um, you know, I, wow. I refer my 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 clients to doctors all the time because I'm not a doctor. I'm not I cannot give medical advice mm. and if they have something medical, like truly medical that needs to be addressed, then I can't address that for them. I can help them with wellness. I can help them to be well and maybe some of the things that I do will help them to, well many of their conditions will self-correct, but I'm not a medical doctor. So yeah. um just yeah. you know I like the middle ground, right? I like to be able to look at both sides of the uh the spectrum. And, and kind of chart my own course there. Yeah. Wow. I love that. I'm so glad you brought that up because, you know, sometimes, you know, cause, uh, you know, my, I get trashed on, especially by use by my colleagues. Cause they think that, Oh, um, you know, I'm, uh, I've gone to the dark side and I'm condemning all <laughs> doctors and all this stuff. And, yeah. But really I am a centrist. Okay. And, and I look at, um, you know, you can't be all in on Western medicine. Okay. But you can't be all in on Eastern medicine. Okay. Yep. Yeah, because there, there, I know that cause I've seen it on the other side, let's say the totally 180 to Western medicine, allopathic medicine are things that are really not good for people. They're kooky, they're dangerous. Yeah. Yeah. But then again, on the Western medicine side, there is a lot of things that are, are not good. Okay. Right. And yep. you wouldn't call them kooky, but I call them kooky. Cause they're, yeah. when you really think about it, I mean, really you're recommending that, but you're getting, you know, people 
sometimes when you decide you want to change your life, but you already have issues, you have to kind of phase yourself out of those issues. But those issues sometimes require medical attention. Yep. <laughs> I mean, I put people on medications. I wasn't all anti-medication. I, right. I, I had judgment. I saw somebody, you know, look, I mean, you're, you're having, you know, your cholesterol is 600, whatever, you know, I mean, until, or, and your blood pressure, you know, is 180 over a hundred before you make a change, you're going to need to be on medication. And as you're getting better and changing your lifestyle, then we can, you can slowly come yeah. off of that medication. You know? First of all, don't die and then we'll fix you. <laughs> Good point. I like that. that so don't take these right. pills so you don't die and right. then we'll, we'll get you fixed right. and you can, then your body will, uh, will take care of itself. Yeah, exactly. So that that's great. Really great. You know, I'm glad you brought that up. So we talk about that and you know, Drew, I really, uh, you know, I can't listen to, I can't wait to listen to more of your podcasts and, um, you know, really happy that, that we connected. Uh, yeah, absolutely. Like this, uh, you know, I think we're very like-minded. Where are you located by the way? I don't know that I asked you that. Uh, um, uh, I am in Orange County, California. Oh, wow. Okay, cool. I can every, I know when it's 9 30 PM every day. Cause I can hear the Disneyland fireworks. Right. <laughs> Isn't that cool? Wow. Yeah. <laughs> that's, that's, that's beautiful. All right. And I'm here in the New York metro area. So yeah. Uh, yeah. I was just out there a few weeks ago. Oh, cool. Yeah. Cool. Excellent. There's a, uh, there's some crop of schools out there. Go we, check it out. Actually, absolutely. My, my, before this podcast, I was looking over some of your material and my wife Googled Krav Maga okay. and we saw there's a bunch pretty close here. Yeah. Um, I, I dropped in on a class at a school on the Upper West Side over there. Very nice. Yeah. Excellent. So, uh, yeah, I, I probably will check it out actually. So, it's, uh, it's cool. Yeah. That's great. Well, uh, thanks again, Drew. And until next time, I'm Dr. Charles, a.k.a. Coach MD, urging you to stay strong in mind, in body, and especially in soul. Bye for now. Thanks, Dr. Charles. Bye.